Hello, my name is Kayleen Reeser. Thank you for joining me for another reading of a story from one of those I've written in my series of World War II veteran story uh, books. This is book four in my World War II Legacies series, We Defended Freedom, Adventures of World War II Veterans. Today's story is about a man named Arthur Kruckerberg, who served in the Army in the Pacific. In the fall of 1944, following a victory on the island of Leyte, Allied troops didn't relax their newly won stronghold. As Japanese forces continued to bombard the area, Arthur Kruckerberg of Decatur, Indiana, sought refuge in a foxhole with another soldier, while enemy tracer rounds raced overhead. Suddenly a grenade landed in the foxhole. Its concussion blew the hand off of Kruckerberg's companion. The war had never seemed so close or so deadly. Born in 1924, Kruckerberg lived in Adams County, Indiana, until he was drafted into the Army in December of 1943. During basic training at Fort Francis E. Warren in Wyoming, he and other recruits practiced shooting at a rifle range in the mountains. It was a cold winter with much snow. We stayed in a cabin with only a potbelly stove for heat, he said. Kruckerberg adapted to a different climate when he sailed with the 182nd platoon from San Francisco for New Guinea. On the South Pacific Island, Kruckerberg's assignments included digging holes for framework storage and performing guard duty. Each night between 0300 and 0430 hours, uh, the Allies were awakened by a sound of engines. Our flight crews got up early to prepare the planes for bombing missions, he said. At Leyte, Kruckerberg became part of a field hospital's laundry detachment. The laundry crew worked with a unit of boilers, washers, and dryers hauled in the backs of semi-trailer trucks to a field hospital. We washed bloodied sheets and bandages from soldiers who had been in combat, he said. The laundry crew was especially careful of linens from the infectious disease wards. We scrubbed items used by patients with typhus, he said. The laundry crew also washed clothing belonging to soldiers, placing individual items inside duffel bags with soldiers' names written on the outside. Kruckerberg's laundry unit developed a barter system. When a ship arrived at Leyte, we traded our laundry services for fresh food, he said. Filipinos on the island helped us with the work. The challenge of living in the steamy tropics was lightened when Kruckerberg received care packages from home. Churches sent shoeboxes full of goodies like talcum powder, hard candy, gum, notepads, and pencils to several of his service guys, he said. For entertainment, troops were treated to performances by comedian and active USO performer Bob Hope and singer Betty Grable. After Lady, troops were sent to the Philippines, where Krakenberg and others were hospitalized for eating spoiled food. By the time he arrived at the island of Palawan in midsummer 1945, Allied troops across the Pacific were preparing for a major invasion of Japan. We were told the number of American casualties following the invasion would be high, he said. The words of that infamous Allied doomsayer and propagandist for the Japanese, Tokyo Rose, didn't help. She always said the Allies were losing, he said. Then the troops heard news about two bombs that had been dropped over, <coughs> excuse me, over Nagasaki and Hiroshima. A few weeks later, the Japanese military officially surrendered. The war was over. Staff Sergeant Kruckerberg was discharged in February 1946. He returned to Adams County. He and his wife Olga became parents to four children. For decades, the Kruckerbergs met for reunions 
with veterans and their families whom Arthur had served with. As soldiers, we did our share and more, he said. I don't know the future of the United States, but I'm proud to have served. That story is taken from book four in my World War II Legacies series, We Defended Freedom, Adventures of World War II Veterans. Again, my name is Kayleen Reeser, and each story that I read is taken from an interview that I did with that veterans. I've done over 200 World War II. So um, thanks for listening. I hope that it will boost your patriotism. Please tell a friend to watch, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. Um, and if you are a veteran, thank you for your service. We would not be a free country without you. See you next week.